Hello everybody and welcome. In this video we are going to learn how to strip down a standard office filing cabinet as you see here. Take all the paint off of it, refinish it, uh, and install a whole bunch of new hardware. And when it's done uh, it's going to look something like this. As you can see here we've got it stripped down nicely uh, with all new hardware on the front, new latches, new handles, uh, and basically a whole new look. Much better than what you would expect to uh, find in the store. So let's go ahead and get started and uh, we'll have a look. Here we go. So I've been trying to figure out the best way to get the paint off of this thing. As you can imagine, it's pretty tough paint that's baked on at the factory and is uh, not intended to be removed. So we've tried a pad sander. We got a grinder with a 80 grit wheel so this is my pad sander with some 80 grit paper and a homemade attachment on the back for the vacuum since dewalt can't seem to uh manufacture a proper attachment for a one and a quarter inch hose i don't know why that is and then we got this wheel grinder here with an 80 inch grit wheel on it this thing is an animal but it's a little bit too much of an animal uh, for this frankly up here you see with that wheel grinder it takes that paint off but it leaves a pretty distinct marking on there from the wheel and uh no matter what i do i'm not going to be able to get that nice and even uh and looking good so that's just i think too aggressive and the pad sander is slower but takes a lot of time up here i did the wheel grinder and then pad sanded on top of that just to pull some of those wheel marks out and down here I tried some stripper remover but it's just not getting the job done trying this citrus strip stripping gel but uh this stuff is just really not making a difference with it so kind of no matter what we do I don't think uh I don't think that's gonna work we're gonna end up being here until the end of time trying to strip it off with that so I think what we're gonna do is go back to the pad sander, use the 80 grit and just suck it up, even though it's a little bit slower. And we're just gonna pull it off with the pad sander first. And then once we got it all kind of roughed up and off, then we'll go back and figure out how we're gonna polish this thing up as well. So more to come on that. We'll see you on the other side here. So one other note before we get started here for you guys, I mentioned earlier that the uh, DeWalt just would not come with an attachment for a one and a quarter. And so as I was saying, I made this attachment basically using this little Coke bottle here. Um, just kind of, this thing actually uh, slides nicely uh, like this way. So the one and a quarter attachment here slides nicely onto the end and then just cut the back half of it and use the old universal duct tape. and. Uh, it works like a champ. So I don't know why DeWalt can't seem to make some decent attachments, but we'll, uh, we'll do it for them. And uh, this part I did buy, but uh, it's supposed to thread on to God knows what size shop vac, but anyway, it doesn't really work. The other thing, since we're getting a lot of sanding, we're gonna wanna use good uh, breathing protection. So here we got a 3M air filter and breathing mask. Uh, to help keep down all the dust from the sand. You can already see some of the dust that's on there uh, from from the uh, earlier sanding that we did. So there you go. Let's get to it. take a look at what we got so far that's a crap ton of work getting that stuff off of there dry with the sandpaper as you can see this is a uh, well that stuff is 120 grit that's 80 grit 80 grit was most certainly helpful however even with the 80 grit it's uh wearing out pretty fast on this thing but it's doing a pretty good job getting it off of there i'm trying not to get too many deep scratches in it because we're going to come back later and try to polish this up but i'll tell you what that uh dust collector and the uh, vacuum cleaner here 
are making a huge difference because for those of you who aren't familiar or wondering what I was doing there, when you put that sandpaper on there, you put this small plastic clip on, and it's got the hole punchers on there. It's got the eight hole punches, and then it punches the holes through there, which is where the vacuum uh, pulls the dust up through the sandpaper. So that makes a huge difference. Not having, on, not having that on there, we'd have a huge cloud of dust and of course having that respirator uh, is good as well certainly don't want to be breathing that mess in so anyways so we're going to throw some more sandpaper on here polish up some of these uh marks where we were using the rotary sander there earlier that thing is awesome it pulled the paint right off but it really scuffed the metal up pretty good too but that's why we're starting on the back end of this filing cabinet uh, this is sort of our experimental side nobody's really going to see this anyway and we'll use this to get everything figured out uh, so that by the time we get to the sides in the front here, uh, we should have a pretty good system going. So, all right, let's get back to it. second side is finished so took a bit of time and a fair amount of elbow grease but we got it all off of there it is quite a bit of work so in between takes here I actually ducked out to the hardware store and picked up a bunch more uh, sandpaper I got both 60 grit and 80 grit and 120 I tried out some of the 60 but interestingly enough it's almost too coarse and it's uh it's hard to get all the paint up with such a coarse uh, sandpaper it does rip into it pretty good but you got to go over the same area uh, many more times so i actually dropped it back to an 80 grit and that seemed to help out quite a bit um, so we're gonna flip it onto the other side and start working on side three so making progress We got most of the paint off of this thing. The uh, devil's always in the details, going around all the trim work and, and all the metal folds and flaps and things to that effect. So it always takes a bit of time. Still some more work to do there. A lot of this stuff is just not going to come out with the uh, pad sander. So I think next up I'm going to get my uh, drill and a rotary wire brush and start working in some more of these nooks and crannies. As you can see kind of up in the folds here where there's some paint on the edge we need to get that out and uh, in some of these nooks and crannies where the uh, pad sander is not going to fit we're not going to get all that out but that's okay doesn't matter as long as uh, from the outside you don't see any of the beige paint I think we'll be in good shape uh, and then once we finish up with that it'll be time to get to work on doing a bit of the polishing uh, we'll also have to come back to uh, all these drawers here and uh, sand the paint off the face of the drawers. We're also going to have to uh, get these little metal slides off here. There's a little tab on the inside. I think I can get those off without breaking them. So we'll see where it goes next. So that's it for now. Okay, so just another little technical interlude on some of the equipment that we're using here. These are the uh, boxes of sandpaper I picked up at Home Depot for this project here. I originally thought that maybe 15 sheets was gonna be overkill, uh, but I've been plowing through this stuff like nobody's business. I've probably already been through better than half of the sheets on this, and really been using mostly this 80, 80 grit to uh, get the most of the uh, paint off in the first cut. We'll come back later and probably do a, um, a once over with the 220 just to smooth things over a little bit more. But you can see over here in the uh, sandpaper graveyard, 
it's taken quite a bit uh, to get through this stuff and uh it's been pretty rough on it too so particularly going around all the edges and nooks and crannies really kind of rips into the paper pretty good so uh <laughs> if you're gonna do this just prepare to go through some uh prepare to go through some sandpaper uh in the process i'm probably a good you know 10 sheets in uh, at this point and uh still have more to go so anyway there you go buy lots of sandpaper uh, before you get started you're gonna need it okay so next up i am going to utilize the drill and a couple of wire brushes to try to get in some of these nooks and crannies and get the rest of the paint out these wire brushes have already taken a bit of a beating on a previous project so i may have to get some fresh ones that aren't quite so uh cupped in like these two are but uh we'll get started with these and see how far we get and uh if we need to get some new ones we'll get some new ones and go from there let's see how it does all right so i used that wire brush in there and as i predicted that first brush i used was a little bit too worn out uh, this thing is just uh too cupped over kind of worn over and rounded just wasn't really getting in there so i put the uh rotary brush on here and that allowed me to get in there a little bit better it's not quite so worn out so i was able to uh, get in there and get that out so that looks really nice same thing kind of underneath that lip, underneath that lip too. Now, that wire brush did sort of polish the metal as it was going, and uh, I don't want that. I want to have a nice uniform look, so I then went back over it with that pad sander a little bit uh, just to rough it up. And again, most of this has still just been done with the 80 grit. We're going to go uh, back over this with the 220 grit uh, before we... Uh, before we finish, uh, just to kind of get a good, even uh, pattern all over the metal. And then I still gotta do a bit of research and figure out how I'm gonna polish it all up from there. But anyway, I think that's the right approach uh, to get in there and get some of the paint out of these uh, creases and nooks and crannies. So we'll spend some more time working on that next. Okay, so up next, we're gonna have to take all the paint off the front of these filing cabinet drawers. And uh, it's a little more challenging simply because the metal uh, is quite a bit thinner in here. There's simply not as much to it. Uh, and additionally, we've got these slides here. So these operate the, uh, the latch to open up the, uh, the filing cabinet. And you can see on the inside here, this is uh, just done via a spring-based mechanism. And the little uh, tab on the outside, little metal tab here, uh, basically comes through and uh, is held on by this little twisted metal piece here. So we need to actually twist that about 90 degrees and that should allow that button to pop out the front. As far as I can tell though, it's just one solid metal piece. And it looks like maybe when they manufactured it, they stuck it through there and just gave it a twist and popped that end piece to the right and held it. I don't want that to pop off when I pull it out of there and break, because then that's gonna make a make for a challenge to actually put this thing back together when we're done. So I'm gonna pop that spring off that you see there. And then what I'm gonna do, I'll try this anyway, is to use this little torch here, a little uh, propane torch, and just very gently warm that up. I'm gonna hit it with a really small flame and just kind of gently lap at it just to try to warm it up a little bit and make that metal a little bit more pliable. And hopefully then we can twist it uh, and pop it off because... Well, unfortunately that pretty much played out exactly like I thought it would, so... When I went to uh, twist that little metal piece so that it could uh, come out of there, it pretty much just snapped off, snapped right off. So, you know, that was 
probably put on there and intended to do one little turn at the factory and that was it so it was never meant to be twisted and then twisted back again so that uh, unfortunately played out how i thought it would but it is what it is so anyway it's off of there now so we'll go ahead and uh sand this down and get the paint off of there and then uh we'll figure out later what we're going to put back on there for a little thumb latch uh, to release that so the holes through there i'll come up with something to put through there not super fond of those anyway i don't i don't think they're particularly good looking they're just little metal blocks of aluminum so i might be able to come up with something a little more stylish anyway so we'll think on that for a bit and uh go from there so Next up, we'll get to uh, taking the paint off of the front of these uh, filing cabinets here. I got all the paint off of the uh, the front of the first drawer. I think overall that turned out pretty nicely. Looks good. You can see there's a number of little kind of divots in here where they did some of the tack welding uh, and stuff like that. So you kind of got to dig into those little divots uh, with the corner of the pad sander and around here. So I think that all came out pretty well. Got, uh, got everything up off the... Uh, the edges in the side here too be nice if uh, everything went as quickly in real life as it does in the time-lapse videos not the case until then I got to get the uh, get the paint off the remaining front of uh, off the front of the remaining three cabinets here and then I've also got to uh, I guess I'm just gonna have to go ahead and pop off those buttons and uh, come up with another solution to put the slide latch back in later. So off we go on the next part. All right, well, I got all the paint off all the four of the uh, cabinet drawers there. So that's good. I think everything came out looking pretty nice. Got all the paint off around the, uh, around the edges and all the nooks and crannies. And, uh, once again, that really chews through the uh, through the paper. It took at least one sheet per uh, per drawer front. Probably could have used two, but managed to get it done with one, so that's good. So next up, I think we're going to uh, lay the cabinet back down. We're going to change up to maybe like a 220 grit sandpaper, uh, and then go over the whole thing again. Not to remove paint this time, but just to. Uh, to kind of even out the uh, pattern on the metal, make sure everything looks nice and uniform. Uh, and then I also still have to go around in some of these gaps and edges and clean out a little bit of the paint. I've been thinking I may actually try to use my Dremel tool uh, with a little rotary brush on it for that. We'll see, uh, see if that works. So I went around with the Dremel tool and used that to try to clean in these edges a little bit or up in these little creases, the metal folds. I think generally speaking, it did pretty well uh, and got a lot of the paint out of there. Once I go back over that with a sander, it'll clean up those polished spots and make it look uh, uniform again. I will say, however, I was disappointed in my uh, Dremel tool brushes. These things just... Uh, came flying apart particularly at the uh high rpms i had to keep the dremel tool on the lower rpms these things uh wore out and just flew apart i was getting hit by little metal bits left right and center while i was doing that so just goes to show you gotta wear safety glasses and 
hearing protection and breathing masks and all that with this stuff. You don't want to get any of that in your eyes. It'd be pretty bad. So anyway, I think that's probably it for now. We'll uh, come back tomorrow and sand it up. Okay, so now that we've got all the paint off the front of the filing cabinet here, I've been trying to figure out what I want to do for these label holders here. Uh, I've been looking around online and haven't really found any I like for that or any that would really fit, so I've kind of come back to the ones I already have. And what I don't like about these is that these have been chromed, and so they're all nice and chrome and shiny. Um, but the filing cabinet, I think, is going to have more of this kind of a uh, sanded metal look, frankly. So what I've done is taken one of these and actually just used some sandpaper on it as well to kind of give some texture um, back into the metal and to get rid of that chrome uh, finish that was put on it previously. And with that new sanded look on the label holders there, I think that's actually gonna match up real nice uh, and look good, which is awesome, because now I don't have to mess around with doing something different for it. I also have been looking more closely at how I wanted to finish the front of these, and originally I was planning on doing some jeweling or metal turning or something like that, but having looked at it and tried a couple of things, I don't think that's going to work out too well uh, for a couple of different reasons. Um, not the least of which is there's actually a raised bump uh, right up underneath here where I just put that in there. Um, that's going to make that difficult to do that turning or jeweling. That bump would uh, interfere with that. So I think I'm actually going to get the sander out and just put some uh, slightly finer grit sandpaper in there, like a 220 or something like that. And I got to come back and sand some of this stuff out, give everything a more even finish. Uh, same goes for the rest of the filing cabinet here. I'm going to get some of this out. And then uh, just give it a really good once over. And then where I went around with the rotary brush, it kind of gave a little bit of a burned look there. Get that sanded out uh, and looking good as well. So I've also been looking at the latch mechanisms uh, and the handles. And I think I know what I'm going to do for those. We'll have those coming up here uh, in just a minute. And I'll show you, uh, show you what I've got in mind for that. now have been sanded which gives it a bit more of that kind of matte finish I don't know if that shows up real well there on the on the screen but certainly has done a good job of getting rid of that kind of polished chrome look which is not really going to match up with the cabinet now so good well one more problem solved that takes care of that all right, so today's finishing day. So we're gonna take this and sand it out one more time and see if we can get a nice even finish uh, all over the whole cabinet and uh, see if we can cover up some of these scuffs and marks and what have you. We'll get some assistance from the dog here. We're gonna start out with a 220 grit paper uh, on the sander and see if we can uh, get a nice even finish all over it. I had to clean out my shop back there. It was completely choked up and covered up and clogged up and all the fine dust from the uh, paint removal obviously one more reason why you need to wear breathing protection while you're taking that stuff off so you don't inhale all that junk so anyway we'll go ahead and get started with uh, the final sanding here and then we're going to start mounting some of the hardware and uh, wrap it up all right
Okay, so I've been over the entire cabinet now with 150 grit. I think I've gotten it to a nice kind of even patina all the way around. I think it looks pretty good. Digging the uh, kind of the texture that the 150 leaves. I went through 220, then back to 80, and then eventually 150. I think 150 was the uh, is the right grit for the patina that I'm looking for, depending on what you're looking to do in your project might be a bit different. Uh, I am glad I started on the back here though, because I tell you these uh, swirl marks that were left when I used my angle grinder with that paint remover, uh, that sander, man, that thing was aggressive and it really uh, dug into the metal. I've gone through and uh, probably gone over this thing 15 times now with different grits and it still is not coming out. So if you're gonna do one of these, make sure you start on the back as well in a place you can't see so you can kind of figure out what works for you. So anyway, this is all looking good. I also came and went back over all the drawer fronts uh, with 150. So I think those are working pretty well too. And uh, everything seems to have come up with a nice, uh, nice finish on it that I'm looking for. Okay, so let's take a look at the hardware uh, that we're gonna use on this cabinet. Uh, there's a couple different pieces I need. The first, I've got my uh, little label holders that go back on the front of the drawers there. These are the ones that were kind of high polished aluminum. So we got those sanded and finished. I think those look really nice. We're gonna need some new drawer uh, pulls. These are the ones that were on the filing cabinet, kind of boring uh, aluminum. And what I really wanna go for here, I think right now anyway, is kind of a mix of brass and uh, steel. I think that'll kind of have a nice look, particularly as it ages over time and gets a nice patina on it. I think it'll be pretty cool looking. So I've got these four inch uh, pulls that we'll put on the drawers here. Um, they gotta be four inches on center uh, between the holes here to match up the uh, holes here on the front of the filing cabinet. These are both uh, four inches right there. So there you go. Uh, and then I'm gonna put some feet uh, on the bottom of the cabinet. These actually sit on the outside of the cabinet and the cabinet sits down in that lip right there. And uh, I'm gonna replace these stock uh, steel and uh, black rubber feet. I've got these other ones. These are called levelers. Uh, this one has a bit more of a, a brass patina to it, which I think will look nice. Uh, and then I've got some brass screws uh, that are gonna go in all of this as well. So all in there uh, with the new feet, with the uh, card handle, with the, uh, excuse me, the card holder, the handle, uh, and then down here, I've got these to latch the drawers closed. You know, once we pulled out uh, these old drawer latches uh, back in the beginning, and I tried to get these things off and they just snapped right off. There's nothing I can do with those, so those are done. So I need something different to hold the drawer closed. So I found these online. These things are kind of cool. It's uh, basically spring loaded. So you take this and set it out and that'll slide into the into the catch, which will be on the outside of the cabinet. Then when you want to go open the cabinet, you just stick that, hit that little button right there, and uh, it goes ahead and pops that back. So I'm gonna polish these up a little bit and get them cleaned up. Uh, generally, we'll get those put on, and again, I've got brass screws to go all on the outside of all these pieces. So I think that mixture of brass and steel uh, should look pretty cool. So lastly, before we uh, get going mounting the hardware. I am gonna get a rag and go over the whole thing with some mineral spirits just to kind of give it a good wipe down, get rid of all the residue, any little bits of paint that might be left on there as well as the dust uh, from the sanding. So I think that'll be good. And then uh, we're gonna go over it with some car wax. Um, I wanna be sure we protect the steel so it doesn't rust and corrode over time. Originally, uh, I was gonna spray it down with this kind of clear coat, this kind of flat clear coat. But the more I think about it, I'm not sure I wanna do that anymore. So I picked up uh, some uh, wax, some automotive wax, and we're gonna polish this thing down with some wax, which should seal up that steel a bit and give it some protection uh, against corrosion. Probably not 100%, but better than nothing. And uh, it should give it a nice even look uh, as well. So we'll get started on it. We'll do the uh, mineral spirits first. Uh, then we will probably wax it up and then we will get the hardware mounted after that. So here we go.
Okay, so I got the wax on, got everything polished up, wipe back off. Ideally, I'd like to use my uh, orbital buffer to get that done, but I don't have the right uh, cloths and covers for that. So I'll try to get that in the next day or two and take care of that. But in the meantime, everything seems to look pretty good. It's got a nice protective coating of wax on it. So uh, that should help against any kind of rust, things like that. Not 100%, but better than nothing. So uh, next step is to start drilling some holes and uh, getting the hardware installed in the drawers here. Get the clips put on and we'll get the uh, handles put on and the uh, label holders and we should be good. And uh, after that, I will start working on the feet. Okay, so I've got one of these, actually this is the second one, together now. You can see it's looking good. Got the uh, label holder up here installed. Got our uh, handle here, looking good. And then we've got our, our catch here. Pretty happy with how the brass and uh, stainless steel is all coming together here. I think it's looking really good. I did want to show you real quick on the inside so on the inside here these are actually some metric screws uh, so if you guys decide to buy this make sure you get the right ones that match the uh match the handle and the other thing i've done here is to get a little locking washer so put a little locking washer behind the uh metric screw to make sure it holds on there pretty well and then over here, you can see we've got the four screws that are holding the back of the uh, latch on there. It sort of just barely fit. These are half inch deep screws and you can see they just barely get in there uh, in that nook behind the folded uh, sheet metal there. There's also where the bar came through, so I had to straddle the bar, made that work. Now to keep these from coming off over time, I've actually used the uh, little nylon uh, hex nut so they've got that nylon inside of them that grabs onto it and holds on so that's been working out pretty well and i've just been using a nut driver to kind of grab those and give them a good twist there uh, and hold them on there and then over here i've been having to use a pair of pliers just to get in here and hold on to this and then uh, i've been tightening on the inside and holding the screw on the outside because i do not want the outside to slip and uh, scratch up the front of the cabinet here. So all said, I think this is looking really good and uh, very happy with it so far. So I've got this set six inches from the bottom and I've just been using my square here to uh, measure the distance, make sure I keep everything level. Uh, and I'm just using a standard drill to punch the hole through there, kind of doing those one at a time, get the first hole punched, get the screw put in, that kind of holds it in place. And then come up diagonally, get the second one put in, and get that in. Now everything is nice and stable and level and secure. And then I uh, can move on and get the other two done uh, as well. So I'm very happy with how this is coming out so far. Uh, two more drawers to go, and then we'll start working on the feet. So there you go. So I did want to take a minute and show you guys these latches I bought. I uh, found these on Amazon. I have no idea where they're made, but I do know that it's a stainless steel bolt based on high quality products by means of excellent services and good faith to reach the win-win goals with customers. And uh, it's really hard to argue with that. So it's made out of high quality metal. You know that because it says so. And it also has the EW2000 Environment Protect Authentication, which is hilarious. Elasticity Determined. So that's freaking hilarious. 
but whatever as long as they do the job that's what matters and they look right so if you're looking for these now you'll know what to look for i think i got them from unico u-n-i-k-o or something like that anyway good luck with that okay back to the assembly all right well now that i've got all four drawers done it's time to turn our attention to the cabinet and more specifically to getting these feet on there so we're going to put three feet across the bottom <clears throat> there's already sort of a natural kind of tab here with the bottom so it's going to line these uh outside feet up to those uh, outside tabs and we're going to put one kind of right here in the middle so we'll have three of these across the bottom and then we'll have four brass screws uh, that go into each one of them so i think that'll look really nice when it's done and we'll have uh three on each side uh so that should look uh really nice so we'll go ahead and get started on that and then uh we are approaching completion very rapidly here. So, all right, I'll get going on that. Here we go. got the first one on I think that looks pretty good I like the uh, brass with the stainless steel I think that looks nice it's a nice contrast there you might have noticed uh, as I was setting it I was actually using a punch uh, along with my hammer here just uh, to put a small dimple uh, into the metal and that helps to get the drill bit uh, centered where I want it and uh, keeps it from wandering off as much uh, as you're trying to drill uh, drill the hole through the metal there. This uh, steel on the side here is also a little bit thicker than the steel I was dealing with on the front of the cabinet drawers over there. So I've actually been taking a little drop of uh, three and one oil here and putting it right on the end of the drill bit just to lubricate that. And again, kind of helps to uh, keep it centered, keep it lubricated and uh, going smoothly. So there you go. Okay, let's get back and uh, finish up the rest of these. So I got a few more to go and then we'll just about uh, ready to wrap it up. All right. Okay. So there it is all finished up got all four drawers installed got the feet on the bottom there i am missing uh missing one foot in the middle uh which is still on order so we'll get those last two feet for the middle sometimes we can get those put in but i think those uh those feet on the bottom look really nice there so that looks good i think three is probably the right number for stability and for uh sharing the load once all this gets uh, put together. So the last thing I need to do here is to uh, get the catch put on the drawer. So right now the drawer opens real nice. There's nothing to, uh, to stop the catch. So I need to uh, go ahead and get this guy mounted up here. So we're gonna do that. Make sure everything is nice and even and level. And then once I get all of that kind of Centered, we'll drill the holes, and we're gonna have to use machine screws uh, on the left side. I take that back, metal screws on the left side. The ones on the bolt here were machine screws, because this was thin enough to where I could just directly poke those through on the back and use those uh, nylon hex nut washers to hold those on there nice and tight. However, over here, where we're gonna have to mount this bracket you can see that it actually sits on the front of this kind of two inch metal box. It's right here. 
and this is blocking the machine screws from getting all the way through. So if I was going to do that, <clears throat> I would have to get like two and a half or three inch machine screws and drill in the front all the way through the back and then run all the way through and put the bolt on the back. And that's just a pain for a number of reasons, not, not the least of which is trying to get it straight all the way through so you don't end up with your bolt being angled. Uh, or it would be to cut a hole in here and thread a small one in and then put the bolt here, which is uh, equally a pain in the neck. So instead of doing all that, we'll just switch from machine screws over to metal screws. I got some nice brass metal screws uh, that will match up there. I couldn't find any that were the slot head. They are uh, Phillips head, but they look nice and they look the same. So nobody will really notice unless you're looking close. So we'll go ahead and get this lined up get these uh drilled in and then after that i think this guy is just about finished and ready for action well, like i said i'll just have to wait a couple days to get those last two feet here in the mail but other than that uh it'll be in good shape so we'll go ahead and knock that out and then uh be back in a few minutes Okay, so I've got the uh, got the catch bracket on there. I think everything looks pretty nice and straight. Everything seems to be snapping into place nicely. So uh, cabinet is not going to come open. Now we open up. There we go. Perfect. All right. So now I just need to do that uh, three more times and. Uh, We'll be finished. So, all right, here I go. Get the last three down here. I did notice, by the way, that when I was drilling these holes, that the drill bit wanted to walk just a smidge to the left, like maybe a 32nd of an inch. Wasn't too bad. I managed to hold it in place, but I might start a little more to the right side of the hole on the next one just to make sure I can keep that uh, centered nice and evenly. It did want to walk just a bit, even though I did put a dimple in there uh, as well. So. FYI on that. Okay, awesome. All right, I'm gonna do the next three. All right, so for this last one here, we won't do the time lapse. We'll actually do a full video. This one here. All right, so the first thing we need to do here is get our latch in the right position. And I've been trying to get the top kind of leveled up there. So now it's right. And then get it sort of just in the right place here on the side bar. And so make sure we've got Good gap on the top and the bottom. It's looking pretty good. All right, I think that'll do it. go and we got our two dots so we know where that needs to go and we'll go ahead and put our punch here right in the middle we want to create a little dimple all right kind of here create our little dimple there we go now, I've been uh, 
putting a bit of a uh, oil here on the on the drill bit helps to reduce friction so i'm not burning out my drill bit and uh yeah. stick that in there to kind of spin off the excess we'll kind of line up here on our dimple give it a little pressure That one. There we go. All right, that's looking good. I'll we'll grab our bracket. I'll just kind of snug this up here just a bit. over tighten it. I don't want to strip it out or anything. Get it just right. Okay, so it's pretty much done here. We're going to uh, take a quick walk around and go through some lessons learned and, you know, kind of wrap things up for you. Uh, overall, I think it came out great. I ended up doing things a little bit differently in the end that I thought I was going to do uh, as we went through this, but that's kind of how these things go. You know, you change your mind a few times as you go through the project and uh, usually uh, things kind of end up for the better. Uh, things don't always turn out the uh, the way you thought they would at the beginning. So we'll go through this and uh, see what we think. So uh, here we go. Let's have a walk around. Okay, so overall, very happy with how things turned out. I think using these external latches uh, was really good. You know, the cabinet originally came with these thumb latches that were in here. And if you were in and out of this thing uh, 100 times a day, that would probably would be the, uh, the right way to go. But I'm not going to be in it that often. So I'm happy to take uh, form over function. And I think these external uh, latches with the brass uh, look really nice there. So uh, paint removal, again, was a total pain in the butt. Uh, the chemical paint stripper, uh, at least the stuff I was using, uh, wasn't really going to work very well. So we went for a mechanical removal. The uh, 80 grit, I think, was the right way to go to get the, uh, to get the paint off all the way around. And then the 150 grit uh, worked nicely in the end to kind of leave a nice patina on the metal uh, and kind of nice uh, surface. So very happy with how that turned out. The 80, or excuse me, the uh, 60 grit was just uh, a little bit too rough. Also, the uh, rotary sander, I cannot recommend that. That really was very aggressive. And even after I went across the back here many, many times, uh, it still left some of the divots uh, from where I, I use that thing to begin with. But that's why you start on the back. Uh, kind of use that as your experimental side until you get things figured out. That's going to go against the wall anyway. Uh, so nobody uh, is really going to see that. So I purchased this uh, cabinet secondhand from an office supply store uh, that sold kind of used office equipment, got a pretty good deal on it. Uh, I'd recommend you probably do the same thing. You can save yourself some money that way. As long as uh, nothing's bent and everything's in good shape, uh, nobody will ever be the wiser. So uh, that's kind of just how it goes. You know, the um, on the front here, originally I was gonna try to do some jeweling, do some kind of metal turning uh, on the front of this thing. But as I got into it, I tried a few things out on some different pieces of metal. It was kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, and the more I thought about it, I just didn't think it was really going to work out on this. I don't have a drill press. I would have had to do it all freehand. Uh, I don't think it would have turned out that well. I also had some obstacles like that bump that's on the underside of that, uh, that label holder there that would have made it difficult uh, to kind of get uniform consistency across that. So just decided to go with the sanding uh, and leave it at that. Uh, if you're going to buy some handles, make sure you pay attention to your on-center distance uh, between those. Um, that's going to be uh, that's going to be important, making sure that your handle fits correctly. And then again, I just took these aluminum holders here and sanded those down to kind of get a nice rough finish on those. I had a hard time finding those online. I couldn't couldn't find any that I think would have uh, would have worked for that. Um, I ended up using kind of a mix of machine screws and metal screws. So these are machine screws uh, here. Uh, again, with the uh, with the uh, the hex nut, the nylon hex nuts on the back, you want to make sure that these hold tight uh, and hold over time. Also, when you go to do your positioning, pay attention to where some of these bumps are uh, because there are uh, there are obstacles 
uh, in there that you need to be aware of and work around. So distances and tolerances can get kind of tight in there. So make sure you pay attention to that. And then uh, I also ended up taking this thing to the hardware store with me uh, to figure it out. These ended up being like some metric screws uh, that I had to use in here. So those are a different size. So careful with that. Um, you know, when you're done with all your sanding and before you get ready to uh, put all your hardware on there, do make sure you go over it real well with the mineral spirits. Uh, that helps get all the grease and grime and dirt uh, off of it. Uh, kind of cleans everything up nicely, picks up all the residue uh, and everything else. And then, uh, at least so far, uh, I'm happy with how the car wax went. Um, I used some nice kind of carnauba uh, car wax on this thing, which will help protect the metal a little bit, uh, but still obviously is nice and clear. Uh, and uh, even if it does kind of wear off over time, it won't leave a funky looking pattern. That was one of my concerns with using that flat paint, even the flat clear coat paint was that, you know, over time, if it started, you know, rubbing off or something to that effect, uh, that it would have left an uneven finish. But having that car wax on there, you know, you can always come back later and just throw a little bit more wax on it or sand it down a little bit and uh, then put some more wax on it and You'll be good to go. It's obviously going to be inside in a climate controlled environment anyway, so I'm not too worried about moisture uh, or rust or anything like that. So have fun with your project. Hope it turns out well. I'm very happy with how this turned out. Definitely spend some time doing your research. I probably spent about twice as much time uh, researching all the parts and components uh, kind of looks um, before I got started. I uh, probably spent twice as much time uh, on the research versus the actual work. So good luck with your project. Feel free to leave questions or comments below and we'll see you around. Good luck.